The first time I met the Gombes was at Masterworks. I think they were having a Heritage Day where they had everybody coming in with Judith James came with the bottles and old Bermuda toys and the Gombes came and danced and they had artists there to paint on location. And so I got up to watch them. And I don't know what it was about the sunlight that day and the energy the boys had. And I caught a shot of one of the dancers, Rikaja, the bowman at that time, in midair. And I knew I had stumbled on something spectacular. And I went back to my gallery in the Washington Mall and I started painting it. And someone bought it off the easel before it had even been finished. And I knew that I was onto something, not just in the response that I received, but also in the way that I felt when I was working on it. It was something about, I could hear the drums while I was painting. I could feel the feathers and the tassels. Some energy was happening there. And so I asked that Gombe to dance for me again. I paid him to model for me. And I did several paintings of him over the course of a year or two, and another Gombe Kofi that I find very inspiring. And it came to me that I wanted to know all of them. I didn't want to just have the one whose costume I liked. And so I made a phone call to the family and said that I was interested in shadowing them to see what goes on and what the inner workings is of the troupe, how they are together, their brotherhood. And so for the last year I've been shadowing them in all of the things that they do, jobs that they do, um, parade, the parade, New Year's Boxing Day when they're out in the neighborhoods, um, going to see the mothers, getting the costumes done, the young men that make their own hats and masks, which I had no idea that the men did so much of the artistry. These men are so creative and they love each other so much. What I love, what I love about men in general, but definitely about this troupe is just how much they love and accept each other. There's no, it doesn't feel like there's any criteria, there's no, um, needs to be met. It's just a, a beautiful sharing of good times and there's just a free acceptance and lots of laughter, so much laughter, hilarious times with them. And I love the way that that acceptance allows for the young ones that come in to feel safe because some of them are very young. The youngest one was three I think when he joined this year and so to be away from your mother I mean, their mothers attend practice, but they do go camping in the summer on Daryl's Island, I think. And the Gombes are with the Gombes. There's no mothers allowed because that's the point is to learn to feel a part of the troop, um, to build brotherhood. And so coming up with role models that express that kind of, and it's acceptance, but there are rules and there's, they're serious. Don't play, pay attention, um, practice, come with your best intention, show up prepared. And I feel that a lot of that um, is fundamental to a young man, not just for his own father, but to have a whole tribe of young men that are inspiring and uplifting him and training him and building up his esteem and providing laughter and social experiences. And so being a witness to that, I realized that anyone who's singing the song of our young black men are problematic is not looking everywhere. They clearly can't be looking in every place because just as much as a gang can be destructive, a troop of dancers can be constructive and they inspire our entire nation. They're the mascot of, or the, I fail to come up with a better word than mascot, but they're the face of our culture. They're the one thing that's truly ours. And they're made up of young black men. These troops are made up of young black men. It's time to start talking about how well they're doing and providing financial and emotional and social support outside of just walking behind them when they're dancing. How else am I showing that I believe in what they're about? And that's what I've come to understand my role is for them, is that I go sort of inside, behind the closed scenes, behind, behind the curtain, and I see them when they're getting ready and when they're tired and when they're still dancing even still, and I see them at work creating. Um, and then I feel like I sort of come back out into the world to tell everybody else about how magnificent they are. And that in my 
selling of the work, that part of the proceeds coming back to them helps them to be able to do whatever it is that they need with it. And my intention with the work that I've been preparing this year is that this, this body of art, this book that I'm putting together, that with part of the proceeds from the painting sales and from the sales of the book, that it'll go back to the troop so that the troop can travel. These young men can travel. I mean, it's not the easiest thing for a single mother to sponsor her kids to go away. I mean, trips for some families are expensive and hard to pull off when there are bills to be paid and there's only one parent doing it. So if I'm able to contribute to a young man going away to share his love and his talent with others, representing our country with constructive company in an uplifting environment of other festivals in other countries, I think that that would be the highest thing I could aspire to. And so I called up the troop and for the last year I've been shadowing them. Um, I've built up um, an album of about 30 or 40,000 pictures from all of our work together the last year. And when the whole body is complete, I intend to do a showing. Tell me, what is this project or book going to be called? When will it be released? And what would you say to people to support? The book is called Gambes, the H&H &H Story. And I've had a small grant from the Bermuda Arts Council for materials, which has helped to get me started. And so I'm continuing to paint.